Welcome back guys. So today's look isn't necessarily a wearable one, it was just something that I was practicing for an editorial shoot that I've got coming up. So I'm starting off with Urban Decay's Rehab Makeup Prep. This is so, so good. It's almost like putting water on your skin. It just really hydrates without that greasy feel. This is the new foundation by Natasha Denona. It's a full coverage foundation. And I'm gonna use two shades. I'm gonna use one that's slightly darker than my skin to go around the perimeter of my face. Then I'm gonna mix this shade and the lightest shade together to go on the center of my face. I'm gonna be taking my skin tone slightly more bronzed, so I'm going a bit darker with it. Now this foundation is quite thick, it doesn't have a runny consistency, so you definitely need to moisturise the skin really well in order for it to sit nice. So currently there are 11 shades available, and as I said it's quite a thick foundation so I'm not sure how it would sit on dry skin. At the minute I'm using something that's drying my skin out a little bit because I am quite oily, and I found the second time I used it it didn't look as nice because my skin is quite dry. But overall the very first impression of it was really really good. I love the coverage, especially when blended in with your fingers. The first eyeshadow I'm taking is Creme Brulee by Makeup Geek. And on my MAC 286 brush, I'm going to work this in circular motions, starting on the outer half of the eye and working that colour through the socket. You'll notice that I'm wearing a shadow shield underneath my eye because I've already done my base and we're going quite heavy with the browns and I don't want them to fall down onto my cheek. So Creme Brulee is a medium sandy shade and I'm building this up until I'm happy with the opacity. And this is the colour we're going to take the highest, so really work it up towards that brow bone and keep blending. The next eyeshadow I'm taking is Coco Bear, also by Makeup Geek. This is another matte finish eyeshadow and it's a warm, rich brown. Using my same 286 brush, I'm starting by applying that colour to the actual mobile eyelid itself and taking it halfway across, and then using what's left on the bristles to start blending that colour up. So we will cover that creme brulee eyeshadow that we first applied, but that's going to be our transition shade, so we can apply a darker colour without it going patchy, and it will help us to blend it. The placement of your hand on the brush is really important. You don't want to be holding it right at the very front, because that's going to apply more pressure. We want a light hand, so place your fingers towards the end of the brush. I'm now going in with a flat top blending brush, and I'm just working that in circular motions to make sure everything's seamless. I'm now reapplying Coco Bear and again I'm starting on that outer corner of the mobile eyelid and working it in circular motions and pulling it into the socket. We will be going over this colour with an even darker shade and a lot of you ask why we're going with a darker shade almost covering up the work that we've already done. The purpose is so that the colour of the eyeshadow is going to be very intense and also so you get that beautiful gradient even though sometimes it's very minimal you still see a beautiful gradient of darker to warmer shades going up towards the brow bone. So this is the intensity you're looking for. Now I'm going to mix together Coco Bear with this shade called Americano, also from Makeup Geek. This time I'm going to apply it with a small crease brush. The bristles are quite fluffy, so it's not going to apply as much colour, so the payoff will be a little bit softer. And with the bristles being fluffy, it's going to allow us to continue to blend that at the same time as applying it. So I'm concentrating those two shades on the outer third of that eyelid and also into that socket. So we're creating a bit of a V shape but it's super soft and really well blended, so remember to hold your fingers towards the middle and end of the brush. Then just to ensure everything is super blended, we're going back in with that clean blending brush just to soften those very seams, so the outer edges. Using what's left on the bristles on that small fluffy blending brush, I'm pulling that through the inner half of the socket. Now I'm taking this earthy dark brown shade by Melt Cosmetics, and this is the shade Rot. And on my small fluffy crease brush, I'm keeping this on that mobile eyelid on that very outer edge. This is going to be the darkest area and it fades up into those rusty shades. Next I'm taking some Born This Way Concealer by Too Faced. And on a concealer brush we're going to start to carve out our socket line. Now this doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be going over it with pigments. So it's going to blur the line ever so slightly anyway. So don't sit there getting frustrated if you can't make it perfect. I've swapped to a bigger brush because I find this easier just to get the shape. I lay the tip of the bristles down at the highest point and then drag the bristles and the concealer downwards. Now it does feel a shame to ruin all that hard work that you've done but we're going to be going back in with some brown to redarken the outer corner but it is imperative that you put the colours down to begin with otherwise you won't get this cut crease effect. But if you don't want to ruin your hard work then you don't have to do the cut crease. I'm now going in with this pigment by Peaches and Cream called Famous. And this is a very orangey gold shade, but it won't be this intense once we start going over it with the brown. When working with pigments, you definitely want to use a flat shader brush to apply them. 
The bristles are all packed quite tightly and it means it just picks the pigment up and you don't lose any of that pigment between the bristles. It just lays the colour down straight onto your skin. Next we're going in with Peached Pigment also by Peaches and Cream and on another flat shader brush I'm applying this to the inner half of that cut crease. So you want to press the colour onto the skin and then feather it into the other pigment that we've already laid down. Now I'm taking a very small flat brush and I've dipped the bristles into Americano and Cocoa Bear and I'm using those small bristles to define the cut crease. Using pigments can often blur that definition that you've created so you want to go back in and just redefine it. I'm dipping a clean flat shader brush into a small amount of rot and I'm pressing that on the outer corner and feathering it into that famous pigment. And you just want to use a light hand to do this. I'm now taking Beaches and Cream also by Makeup Geek and this is also a matte finish eyeshadow. And on a pencil brush I'm applying this to the brow bone. This is going to brighten that area and make the brow bone look a bit more pronounced which in turn gives the eye more shape. Now I've removed the shadow shield from under my eyes and naturally we've got this stark eyeshadow line and a lot of people like that and if you do you can leave it. I want it softer so I'm using a small fluffy blending brush and I'm going backwards and forwards in window wiper motions to soften that line. For eyeliner I'm using Inglot's number 77 gel liner and I'm starting at the inner corner of my eye and I'm creating a thin line all the way across. Once you've got a nice thin crisp line we're going to start to build it up. And to do that we're going to trace our steps and start to pull the liner just above the line we've already created. Once we're in line with our pupil that's when I start to thicken the lines that's on the outer half of the eye. To create the flick we're going to start the outer corner and pull a nice straight line up and out. To thicken it we're coming back on ourselves towards the eyelid. Often when you drag your brush back on itself you tend to smooth the skin out so you get a cleaner crisp finish. I'm also going to tight line so I'm going underneath in between my top lashes to diminish any pinky tones and this is really going to finish that eyeliner and make it really inky black. The mascara I'm using today is one by Max Factor but as I'm not keen on the actual wand itself I've applied the mascara to my metal tooth comb wand and I'm working that through the lashes. Now my eyeliner's in place I'm going back in with a small amount of rot and I'm deepening that outer V. So I'm just pulling it up from the eyeliner onto the mobile eyelid on the very outer corner. Once your black eyeliner is in place you often feel like you need a bit more smoke so you can just reapply those colours where you need it. I've dipped that same brush into Cocoa Bear and I'm working it underneath the lower lashes. Then as I get to the inner corner of the eye I'm using a small angled brush. The reason for this is so that it doesn't smoke it out too much on the inner corner of the eye. Using an angled liner brush means you can be more precise. Next I'm taking Americano and using that angled liner brush all the way across, again being more precise and get it right underneath those lower lashes close to the root. Now I'm taking Rapunzel which is a metallic champagne finish, also by Makeup Geek, and I'm applying this to the inner corners of the eyes and I'm going to apply a very small amount to the very arch of the eyebrow. So we've already made the brow bone itself more prominent but adding a little bit of sparkle to the very arch will reflect the light and make it look more lifted. To make the eyes appear bigger I'm using Carnet Eye Pencil by Zoeva which is a creamy colour and I'm using this along the waterline. Off camera I've applied some eyelashes and I'm now moving on to concealer and I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. What I like about this concealer is you get the coverage but it's still quite fluid so it doesn't go cakey on the skin. And as this would be for an editorial shot that I've got coming up I want the skin to look like skin. So we're not going to go with heavy contouring, we've gone for a heavy eye and we're going to go for a coloured lip but want the skin to look naturally flawless so I'm going to go in with some faux freckles so all the skin underneath is lovely and seamless and then the freckles show through making it look like real skin not foundation. I'm just using a mix of brown eyeshadows and a small pointy brush and I'm going over the natural freckles I've got on my face and then adding in some fake ones around those. Once I've applied the eyeshadow dots I then use my finger to press over the top of them and this softens them and makes it just look more realistic. I'm now taking Hula by Benefit and I'm going to work this over the tops of the cheekbones and around my hairline and anywhere the sun would naturally hit. Again we're keeping the skin quite fresh looking and more natural so I'm not going to be doing any highlighting or contouring. As I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial this isn't necessarily going to be a wearable look. The skin definitely would be but maybe not with the heavy eyes and the kind of purpley lip that I'm going to pair it with. Now I've gone over with the bronzer I'm just going in and adding a few more freckles. This is kind of girl next door skin. The lipstick I'm going to be using is by J Manual Beauty and this is the colour Shame. 
The way these lipsticks are cut in the tube makes them really easy to apply because they've got a nice sharp edge so you can get a really defined lip straight from the bullet. To intensify the lip, I'm going around the outer perimeter with Night Moth Lip Pencil by MAC. And then by patting my lips together and using a small brush, I'm just going to feather those two colours together. I know this lip look won't be for everybody, but you can definitely rock it with a nude lip. And then on the editorial shoot itself, I would definitely define the brows a lot more, but this was just a practice and I wanted to show you guys, as it seemed a shame to do the makeup, only not to film it. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. You can also click for more of my tutorials and my social handles are on screen if you want to follow me elsewhere.